May 6, 1842, an unknown assailant crept up to the open window and shot former Missouri Governor Lilburn W. Boggs four times in the head. Well, uh, Boggs would live, uh, but as soon as he was able to speak, he accused Porter Rockwell on, and the Prophet Joseph Smith of the crime, that Porter had pulled the trigger and Joseph was an accessory before the fact. Warrants were issued by the governor of the state of Missouri for the arrest of both men, extradition went into effect, and both men were forced into hiding. Porter maintained vehemently his innocence, saying, I never shot at anybody. He said, if I shoot, they, got, they get shot. And Boggs is still alive, isn't he? In Porter's mind, that was perfectly good proof that it hadn't been him who pulled the trigger. Well, Porter had been in Independence at the time of the shooting. And when he heard of it, he immediately went east. Well, unfortunately, he was discovered in St. Louis, arrested, and returned to Jackson County. The family records state this. Without even the pretense of a fair trial, Porter was clapped into irons and incarcerated in a vile dungeon for nine months. At one time, his feet were manacled together and his arms chained to his feet, forcing him to remain for a long period of time in this cramped condition, unable to even sit up straight. He was permitted a little bit of dirty straw for a bed, but no bedding and no fire in very cold weather. For 18, for 18 days, he shook with the cold. After he made an attempt to, dis to escape, his, his treatment became even more severe. His food was of the coarsest variety, and if he failed to eat it, well, it was simply saved and served to him at the next meal. On one occasion, Sheriff Reynolds of Jackson County said, quote, We know that the prophet has great confidence in you. Allure him to a place where we can arrest him and you, Rockwell, shall have your freedom and any pile of money you name." End of quote. Porter Rockwell, tired, weak, so emaciated that he could hardly stand, never faltered in his fidelity to his friend, the prophet. His eagle eyes flashed and he blurted out in blunt defiance, I'll see you all damned first, and then I won't. End of quote. Love that story. Say what you want about Porter, but he loved the prophet Joseph Smith and his successors and was loyal to them. Porter died June the 8th, 1878, Salt Lake City, claiming at the time of his death that he was the most senior member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints still alive. At his funeral, Elder Joseph F. Smith of the Quorum of the Twelve stated the following, quote, They say Porter was a murderer. If he was, he was the friend of Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, and he was faithful to them and to his covenants and he has gone to heaven, clothed with immortality and eternal life, and crowned with all glory which belongs to a departed saint." End of quote. Well, there are more rumors about Porter than fact, but you can take that to heaven with you. Porter is clothed with immortality and eternal life, and crowned with all the glory which belongs to a departed saint. End of story.